Hey everyone, welcome back to my kitchen. Um, today we're going to cook red braised pork belly. And this is a recipe that's in my book, Chinese Soul Food. Um, the reason that I wanted to show off this dish today is because I have this gorgeous pork belly fresh from Skagit River Ranch. And if you live in the Seattle area, you may have heard of Skagit River Ranch. They sell at all the local farmers markets. And farmers Aiko and her husband George and their daughter Nicole um, have been at this for, for many decades. And we've known them for 20 years or so. And always get their products, chicken, their pork, eggs. We love their eggs. Um, but Aiko shared this beautiful pork belly. And, uh, you know, lately with all the, the craziness that's going on, she said that the cooking videos are what gives her solace. So Aiko, this video is dedicated to you and we're gonna do some pork belly. First step I'm gonna do is work on some of the uh, aromatics. The aromatics that we have, lots of green onions, uh, fresh garlic, fresh ginger, um, star anise, and then later on we'll add soy sauce and some cooking wine, etc. But just to cut up the onions, I'm actually making a double batch, so I will need a little bit more of all of these ingredients than what's called for in the recipe. So I've got a bunch of green onions that I've already trimmed, and now I'm just going to cut them into segments, okay, and set those aside. And for the ginger, I just want some really great thick slices here. So I, I don't, I'm not going to peel these because for this purpose, it doesn't matter. And then garlic. So for one batch, usually it's about three or four cloves. And since I'm doing a double, I'm going to put in a bunch of extra garlic. And you just want to uh, smash them just lightly and then peel them. So usually when I make this recipe, I call for a skin on pork belly. Sometimes, like um, at, at Aiko sells it without the skin, and it's just a, this beautiful layer of fat up here. So this is what you make bacon out of. Um, but I like it with the skin on because traditionally when you cook this, um, that skin is what, the collagen in the skin is what helps to thicken the sauce, right? So you want that. Um, and a while ago I had to, um, I needed to use pork skin and Aiko was kind enough to do a special order for me. So I, I still have some of that pork skin and I dug it out of the freezer and we're going to pretend that the pork belly actually had the skin on, but, um, I'm using it today for the purpose of helping to, to create that really unctuous sauce. Uh, I, w I like to cut it in about one to one and a half inch chunks. Okay, so first I'm, I'm cutting this into these strips and then in half. Okay. All right, so to blanch this, I've got the boiling water. I'm going to drop these in for just about five minutes. And we'll let that simmer for about five minutes or so and then drain it and we'll be back to finish cooking this and getting the braise started. All right, so I've blanched the pork and after that process, I mean, it was, the, this pork was so clean, I almost didn't have to blanch it, um, but that's the benefit of buying from your local ranchers like Skagit River Ranch. Um, but what, what we're going to do next is I've added all of the pork into my Dutch oven um, and I've added enough water to almost cover it. And what I want to do is bring it to a boil. And once it does, I will lower the heat and let it simmer. But the, the, now is also the time where we add all of the aromatics. So the green onions from before. Uh, the sliced ginger, we have some star anise, a couple of those, and all the garlic, wonderful garlic, right in there. And soy sauce, of course. Okay. And a couple of key ingredients for flavor. We have rock sugar, which is a type of, um, type of 
sugar that we like to use to sweeten braises such as this. It helps to give it uh, the, the, the telltale kind of dark umber color that, um, that gives it its name, the red braised. And there's different types, so you can have kind of these um, little lozenge shape right here. But they also come, the name comes from the fact that sometimes they come in these rock shapes. Okay, kind of like gems almost, all right? And you can, you know, so they come in different ways. But you just want about um, roughly a t two tablespoons per batch. And I, like I said, I'm, I'm making a bigger batch. I'm adding a little more. If you don't have that, brown sugar is just fine, okay? The other key ingredient is some Chinese rice wine, okay? We, ha we call it Xing wine. And that... Um, when you buy that, you want to make sure that on the bottle it says that it is the rice wine. Uh, it'll either have Xing on it or just plain rice wine. You don't want cooking wine because you have to read the label and make sure that um, it doesn't say that it's the cooking wine because that just doesn't taste as good. So you actually want the wine that you could drink if you wanted to. Okay, so once all of that gets mixed in there, all right, and it'll take a few minutes for it to come to that boil. But once it does, we'll cover it with the lid just like this, and it'll cook for about an hour or so until the chunks of pork are tender, and then we'll be back to show you how to serve it. Okay, so this has been simmering for a little over an hour. And it's done. The meat is tender. The sauce is, is nice and rich. But I want to reduce it a little bit more to get that really thick caramelized uh, effect. And if I were to stop here, it would be great. Growing up, my family loved to have this dish be a little extra saucy because um, you want to eat the sauce with rice. So you could totally stop at this point and call it good. Um, but I want to take it just a little bit further to get some of that extra richness. So we'll let this cook down for a few more minutes. All right, it's been, this pork has been cooking for almost an hour and a half. And I want to show you what it looks like now. Ooh. Um, to present it, I love to put it on a bed of blanched or even stir fried uh, baby bok choy or some other leafy green, whatever you have is nice. And just ladle some of that deliciousness right on top, okay? And you can serve it just like that, nice and pretty. The other option, of course, is making the little steamed buns. Now, I just had some frozen steamed buns in the, in, uh, from the store, and you just put them in the steamer. Now, these are not the normal pinch buns, but they, I just cut this in half. And then what you can do then is take a piece of pork, just like this. These chunks are a little bit big to sandwich into this thing, so I'm just going to slice it a little bit. Just a little bit. And then that can go right into your steam bun. Okay, if you want a little fat in there, that's great too. You can put condiments on it, some cilantro, hot sauce if you'd like, um, however you want to eat it. All right, so that is the red braised pork belly um, featuring the Skagit River Ranch pork belly and Aiko, I hope you are happy. Thanks for joining me today, and we'll see you next time.